Hey Bears fans, we got a three pack of rumors to get into coming up in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel. Daily Chicago Bears videos for free. And when there's major news items, we have extra videos on certain days. Hit that sub button. We're almost at 21,000 subscribers. We can only get there with your help. So subscribe, turn on those notifications. If you love the Chicago Bears, we are the channel for you. So hit that sub button. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on in to today's show. All right, Harrison Graham here. We got a little three pack of rumors to get into on today's video. How about Jay Rogers? Is he leaving? This is going to be four smoking Jays on this one. Bear down because it is happening, barring a very last minute change of heart from Rodgers. He is going to the LA Chargers to be the defensive coordinator under Brandon Staley. This comes from Brad Biggs of the Chicago Tribune. He's reporting that. Uh, obviously, the connection's there. Staley used to be the Bears linebackers coach under Fangio, left to uh, go take a DC job for the Rams, and now he's ascended to be a head coach for the Chargers, bringing his boy Jay Rogers on board to be the defensive coordinator. So now, Matt Nagy's got to replace not only Chuck Pagano, his defensive coordinator, and Jay Rogers, who I thought and many thought could have been a strong defensive coordinator candidate to remain in Chicago, but barring a last-minute change and Nagy saying, hey, the job's yours or something like that, he's going to be heading out west to be the D.C. under Brandon Staley. And this is a big loss. This is not insignificant. This is, I think, pretty easily the best defensive position coach on this football team. He's well-liked. He's been able to maximize guys like Eddie Goldman, Bilal Nichols. A guy like Mario Edwards Jr. comes on board this year, has a solid season. Brent Urban, who's been a journeyman, comes in and contributes. He's gotten the most out of all, a lot of these defensive linemen over the past several years. And I told you guys that if the Bears don't make him the D.C., he's probably going to leave because he's going to have opportunities out there. Now, I'm not saying they should have just made him the D.C. You go through your interview process, you decide who the best is for you. But this is a big, big loss, and now Chicago has to uh, get a new defensive line coach in addition to a defensive coordinator. If you're upset with Jay Rogers leaving, and again, it looks like he is, type F in the comments. Look, it's tough. Uh, it's, a, it's one of those uh, situations where you got to make a decision and make a decision quickly. And obviously, if, if Rodgers can, has a guarantee to be a DC for the Chargers, that's an opportunity you can't pass up. He can't wait around for the Bears. So type F if you're upset with Jay Rogers leaving. Now, we should talk about the coaching staff as a whole, as a whole because more coaches might leave. Uh, Charles London, the running backs coach, he's strongly linked to the Falcons, and there's momentum to him landing the running backs gig over there. Dave Ragone, the passing game coordinator, he's also been linked to Atlanta. There's not as much buzz on that connection there, but uh, Arthur Smith is interested in bringing him to the Falcons as well in some capacity. So it may not stop here. Some other assistants could leave. Now, if some offensive pl position player or coach assistants leave, that's not a huge loss. It's not like this offense is uh, lighting the world on fire by any means, but it's just more vacancies that you have to fill if you're Matt Nagy, if you're Ryan Pace this offseason. But obviously the big one right now, Jay Rogers, I'd say 99% out the door. I'll leave it at 1% chance he returns uh, to the Chicago Bears. But that 1% is Matt Nagy calling him this second saying, hey, come be our DC. Unless that happens, he's going to go be the defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Chargers. And Brandon Staley is being introduced today as their head coach. It's very possible he mentions Jay Rogers as his DC as soon as today. Now, I want to remind you guys real quickly to get subscribed to the channel. I told you guys earlier we're closing in on 21,000. Yesterday's video, top 10 quarterbacks that could start for the Bears in 2021. All kinds of coverage for you guys. Hit that sub button. The link is down below. It's youtube.com slash bears. Now we're trying to get as many subs on this channel and grow as fast as possible. I want to be the number one Bears channel on YouTube here at Chicago Bears now. So help us out and subscribe. All right, next rumor here, Mike Singletary for defensive coordinator. I know a couple of you guys in the comments are intrigued by this. Two smoking Jays. People are definitely talking. You can't rule it out at this point. 
Why? Because The Athletic is reporting that Singletary interviewed for the gig earlier this week. Now, there's a lot to consider here. Mike Singletary has not coached in the NFL since 2016 when he was in a defensive assistant with the Rams. He's also never been a defensive coordinator at any point in his coaching career. So to just bring him on board as your DC, that would be quite a leap for the Hall of Fame linebacker that obviously Bears fans adore and love because he was an absolute beast during his playing days in the 80s and in the early 90s. But to make a leap to be defensive coordinator, that's quite a bit. This is his NFL coaching experience. He's basically been a linebacker's coach his whole career, ascended to be the 49ers head coach after taking over as the interim late in 2008. Didn't do that well there, became the Vikings linebacker coach again. He was a defensive assistant for the Rams in 2016. Since then, he was a head coach of a high school football team uh, in a suburb uh, outside of Dallas, Texas. He went 1-21 in, in two seasons. He coached one of the Alliance of American Football League teams. He just hasn't been doing much recently as far as coaching goes, especially in the NFL. Now, would you hire... Mike Singletary as the Bears' next defensive coordinator. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I love Mike Singletary, but I got to type my N for no. You can't make him your defensive coordinator. He just doesn't have the qualifications, quite frankly. He's never been a defensive coordinator in the NFL. Never. He was a briefly a head coach because the 49ers were in scramble mode. He did all right as the interim. They promoted him, and he wasn't that good as the head coach. I, I just He hasn't coached in the NFL since 2016. Here's what I would do, because Michael Singletary should be involved in the organization in some capacity. You hire a DC, bring on Singletary as a senior assistant, a guy who can help groom the defensive coordinator. He can be an extra voice for Matt Nagy, a guy who's older. You know, Mike Singletary is 62 years old. Get a lot of winning as a player, has a little bit of head coaching experience with the 49ers, bring him on as a senior defensive assistant that can be a voice for the head coach and for the defensive coaches, and he can be in an official capacity within the organization, which I think is something we all would like to see. But as defensive coordinators scheming up defenses every week in 2021, no thanks. I don't want Mike Singletary running my defense. Now, we do know these are the coaches they have or plan on coaching. I'm not sure if Edwards and Gannon and – interviewing, excuse me. I don't know if Edwards and Gannon have officially been interviewed yet, but we know Singletary has. We know Jay Betcher, the former Giants and Cardinals DC, has. Gannon, the Colts uh, defensive uh, or secondary coach, he's uh, they requested an interview for him. Edwards the Cow is currently the Cowboy an assistant coach for the Cowboys. We know they requested an interview there. He also interviewed for the head coaching job for the Bears back in 2018. So as of now, these are the four names that are kind of out there outside of the interior guys. Obviously, Jay Rogers, who's probably gone, and a couple of other options within the organization as well. So the search is well underway. We just do not know who the defensive coordinator will be as of yet in 2021. Now, who will be, we'll let you predict, the Bears DC next season? Maybe you want Mike Singletary. Let me know. Predict it in the comments. Who will be the defensive coordinator in 2021? Now, if you guys want to make some money, go to Bet Rivers because it's championship weekend in the National Football League. Four teams remaining, and there is some money to be made. Go to chatsports.com slash betil, chatsports.com slash betin, Illinois folks, Indiana folks, hence the two different links, because you can sign up and deposit from anywhere, but to place a bet, you must be within state lines of either Illinois or Indiana. So Indiana folks, chatsports.com slash betin, Illinois, chatsports.com slash betil. These are the picks I like. Packers, if you can get it at minus three, it's fluctuated between three and or minus three and minus four this week. I love Green Bay minus three at home if you can get it. Green Bay versus Tampa under 51 and a half points. I love the under in that game. It's going to be in the 20s, going to be cold. Producer Sam's hammering the over. I disagree with him. I like the under. And then if Mahomes is going to play, Chiefs minus three is the play of the weekend, in my opinion. He doesn't lose. The Chiefs haven't covered a lot this year, but minus three, field goal game, I think they can win that game by four plus against the Buffalo Bills. Now, do the Houston Texans, because of course we have to talk to Sean Watson here on Chicago Bears now, do they want three plus first round picks for Watson? Yeah, 
for Smoking Jays. I've been telling you guys this for a while, and ESPN's Jeremy Fowler did an interesting write-up in which he talked to a bunch of NFL executives, uh, you know, high-profile guys around the NFL, you know, asking, what's his trade value? Is a trade realistic? Those type of things. He did a huge write-up. You can go check that out. Uh, but uh, the belief is from ma most executives that he's worth at least three first-round picks. Not that he they could get three for him, that they would get at least three for Deshaun Watson. Three first-round picks is the baseline if you're going to try and trade for the Houston Texans quarterback. I've been telling you guys that. It's why I said I would trade four first-round picks for him, and some of you guys thought I was crazy. Doesn't look so crazy anymore. NFC executive had this to say uh, to Jeremy Rogers. Oh, yeah, he's worth at least that. That haul would be pretty Insane. By the way, we should mention the only quarterback since 2000 to get traded for more than one first round pick, two firsts or more. Yeah, our good friend Smokin' Jay Cutler. So could the Bears do it again? We'll have to wait and see. Where will the Bear or where will Deshaun Watson play next season? I know I've asked you guys, do you want to trade for him? That sort of thing. Predict where he'll actually play, though. Will it be the Texans? Will the Bears get him? Will the Jets get him? What NFL team will Deshaun Watson play for in 2021? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you just want to speak positivity into the world, just type the Bears because that's what we all want at the end of the day. Now, Fowler also said that Chicago's a sleeper for Watson. He mentioned teams like the Jets because they have the number two pick, the Dolphins who have number three pick, Tua, and four top 50 picks this year alone, and obviously their first-round picks in the future as well. But apparently Chicago is a sleeper, according to NFL executives. He wrote this in his write-up as well. Uh, the Bears pick 20th in the draft and might have to throw in an extra day two pick to compensate for the lack of high standing, whatever it takes to get Chicago's first 4,000-yard passer in franchise history. And that's what I've been preaching for weeks. Who cares if you have to throw in an extra pick? Who cares if you have to throw in even an extra first? Because if you can get Deshaun Watson, you absolutely do it because you have a roster that's ready to win right now. So I've officially thrown a trade out there, and I would do this in a heartbeat. Bears get Deshaun Watson, Texans get uh, three first-round picks, including this year, number 20, and a second-round pick next year. So that way, you can keep your second this year. Maybe you draft the left tackle. This is a deep tackle class, and the Texans get three firsts and a second. That's pretty juicy if you ask me. Would you do this trade? Type one for yes, type two for no. I'm doing this trade every single time. I think uh, it would be great for the Bears to finally get a franchise quarterback. Yeah, you're giving up a lot, but the Texans are going to get a lot for this type of player. Deshaun Watson, by the way, for qualified passers, number one in NFL history in completion percentage at just under 68%. Yeah, he's pretty damn good, and he was pretty damn good in 2020, both as a passer and as a runner. This guy, outside of Patrick Mahomes, this is the most dynamic quarterback under the age of 26 in the NFL in terms of his ability to throw the football, be mobile, and his leadership intangibles and all of those type of things. Deshaun Watson is the truth, and the Bears haven't had a quarterback of his caliber in the history of their franchise. Please, please call Ryan Pace. Just see if the Texans will entertain an offer. We'll have it covered all offseason long. It's YouTube.com slash Bears now.